Hello and uh, welcome back to our session regarding error proofing in the assembly. My name is Adrien Auger and I'm the technical sales manager with the international team at Mounts. During the first session that we had a few minutes ago, we reviewed some of the key features in error proofing the assembly and how the EC and ECT series would be able to help answer those uh, needs and requirements. So we talked about tightening strategies, programmable tolerance, job and model functions, screw counting and digital input output. So we talked about these subjects theoretically and how important it is to make sure that the target talk is reached within the right uh, talk tolerance, also within the right window of angle. We talked about the fact that these tools, the EC and ECT will allow you uh, to combine different strategies together so that we can create models with the Cordy tools and job with the battery tools. Of course, a big part of error proofing the assembly is also going to be linked to screw counting, making sure that every screw has been assembled properly on the part when it leaves the assembly line. And we live in a world of communication. So digital input output and network communication is crucial, making sure that we bring real time data to the assembly, but also that we can keep traceability uh, for uh, every data event or every fastening event that happened on the line. So with this session right now, we will talk about the functions and capabilities of the tool. We will have an overview of how the controller looks like. We'll talk about the communication ports as well. We'll have a basic navigation through the menu, through the screen of the controller. We'll talk about the input and output once more. And I will just have a few words on the software as well. If you have questions, feel free to write them in the chat box. We will answer those at the end of the session right now. So let's jump in and let's have a look at the controller. So the controller is a vertical type controller. You can see it right now. It's 25 centimeters tall, 15 centimeters wide and roughly 18 centimeters deep. It's equipped with a touch screen here, some uh, a mounting bracket at the back to make sure that we can um, mount it on the assembly line. And you will notice immediately here a slot. This is where the SD card comes in. So the controller is delivered with an SD card and the aim of this SD card is to back up the programming of the tool but it's also to collect the fastening data so that we can, the controller can bring traceability even without a network being present in the assembly line. So this is an important part of the controller today. If we look underneath, that's where we will unveil the different parts of the controller. So looking a bit closer, we'll see here RS-232 for network communication. Same here with the Ethernet port, which is also going to be used for network communication. So these two ports can communicate in Modbus and open protocol, making sure that uh, 
all the data is sent in real time to the network. On the top, in the middle, we have a 25 pin input output. So this 25 pin will allow the controller to integrate on the assembly line and communicate with the PLC, stack light, or any logical uh, tool or item that is needed around the workstation. Here is the connector for the driver, the driver that you can roughly see here on the left side, and obviously the connector for the power cord here. This model is 230 volts. We also have it available 110 volts if relevant for you. So that's, let's take a look at the screen itself. So first, this is a touch screen, seven inch wide. And this touch screen is the starting screen. And you can immediately, immediately notice that we have the target torque here displayed, the rotation speed, fastening time, different angle. So we have different information already available on the screen here. But we can see also that we have preset one here. And if we click on that, we can display different presets. So what is a preset? The preset is basically the main body of the assembly. And this is where we will set the target torque, the torque tolerance, the speed uh, of the tool, as well as different factors that will impact the fastening uh, assembly. So what that means is that each tool comes with 15 different presets. So it can replace up to 15 different tools with only one driver. You can also see here and here, multi-sequence A, multi-sequence B. These are uh, different programming and we will have a look at them in the next session early afternoon. So to navigate through the screen and the programs is quite straightforward. We go to the login window. This is all the menu is obviously password protected to prevent the operators to access and change the settings on the controller and the driver. By default, the password is going to be zero. Enter. And now we have access to the main frame and the main menu. So I will zoom in a little bit more. So we have here parameters and as well, we will set the different fastening with the presets. We will have different functions, advanced screw counting, setting the input output, uh, network communication, multi-sequence model, all the fastening related settings will be here. So we'll have a look at those later, but let's start with basic settings. Obviously we can change the date and time on the controller. So now we are on the 3rd of February and it's 11.40 here. We can have, we have different options. We can change the brightness of the screen. We can disable if needed the SD card. We can also disable the sound when we touch on the buttons, but we can also change the language. By default, the controller is set to English, but we can set it to uh, French. We can set it to German. So all the different languages are available here, English, German, French, Spanish, and Czech. So these are the language available today. Close that. You will see here 
as well the barcode function so the controller can manage and read barcodes and link them to presets. So this is a function that we will also review in the next session the early afternoon. Storage is going to show us the SD card information. So what is the total, um, total capacity of the card, how many gigabytes are used and what is the available space in the SD card. If we look at remote control, so we then have different sub categories here. The first one is going to be remote. And it's a function that's going to be helpful for automation projects where we can test the tool before launching the full automation. I will zoom out a little bit more. So we can see here loosening and fastening. So what we can do basically is set which preset we want to use and pilot the tool directly from the controller. So this is a way again to test the automation uh, uh, cell before launching the production and connecting it to the network. Auto-customizing is a self-teaching mode. This is also something that we will see in the following session because it's a bit deeper settings. But with this parameter, we can basically teach the assembly to the driver so it will learn uh, and adapt itself to the conditions of the part. We can run a backup. In that case, it will back, it, back up all the settings on the SD card, restore, power reset, and factory reset as well. The third window we can look at is monitoring. And here we will have different function displayed on the screen. We can have the graph function where we will be able to set two different channels. So we can set as an example, torque and speed. And I will make a fastening so we see how it looks like. So obviously here in blue, we have the torque and in orange, we have the speed where we can see that when we reach the sitting point, the tool slows down to reach the target torque for maximum accuracy and repeatability. The graph function is also available on the software on, in a more detailed um, scale and view. And the graph will be very useful to set up the tool, set the different angle windows, but also to check if anything goes wrong on the assembly, uh, to check what's happening during the fastening so that we can remediate and change the settings so that the fastening can be good again. Stop that. Input output is where we would be able to monitor those. So if I'm running the tool, you will see that the output four is up so that uh, tool running is sent on the output four. So this feature here is basically to double check the input output making sure that the wiring is correctly done and that the controller will be able to communicate properly with the other tools and items around them on the workstation. An error is going to be here displaying the last eight error codes. Each error code is linked to a type of error which can be torque reached before the minimum angle, uh, maximum angle 
reached as well so that we can easily identify what went wrong during the assembly. So with this, what you, what you see is that the tool is really accessible, very easy to navigate, and each setting on the controller can be easily changed and reprogrammed. So now let's have a look at the parameters. And this is where it's going to be really um, start to be a bit deeper and really as well uh, fastening related. So let's look at the first tab here, fastening. So fastening is basically the window on which we access our different presets. You can see at the bottom here, we are one out of 15 presets. If I want to change the preset, I just click here, enter the preset number, and I will go to that specific preset. So let's go back to one, and let's navigate through the different features that are available for each preset. So first of all, obviously, we can determine if we work with a torque control or angle control um, fastening strategy. So do we have target torque or do we have an angle target? So let's go back to target torque here. And then the next one is going to be our target torque. So we can change the value by navigating through the arrows or just enter it directly here. And it will display the torque that is the target torque for preset number one. What you'll notice as well is here, it's going to be more or less full. And it's a good indication to see where you are within the range of the tool. So here we are at 10 Newton meters. So we are starting to be higher in the tool range. And if I enter other values, you will see that 14 Newton meters, we are at the maximum capacity of this specific driver. The screwdrivers go from up to 15 Newton meters, inline pistol grip angle head, but also with the battery tools as well. So this is a good indication, but for every parameter, there is also a feature that protects the tool. And it's if we enter a value that is out of the range of the tool, the controller is not going to accept it. So let's try to set the tool to 20 Newton meters, press enter. And you can see that the controller does not accept this value. So it's a good way to make sure that the settings are according to the driver specificities. So let's go back to three Newton meters. Next setting is the torque tolerance. So here we have 10%, meaning that the target torque is three Newton meters and the torque achieved need to be between 2.7 and 3.3 Newton meters. If the torque achieved is not within this torque window, the fastening will be declared not good. Snug torque is the torque amount from which we will start monitoring the angle. So it's going to be an important point so that we have a repeatable point from which we can start monitoring the, the angle and making sure that the screw is properly fastened. Target speed, 150 RPM in that case. And the next one here, target angle is going to be only valid if we have an angle control and torque monitoring strategy. In that case, you will see that on the top, we don't have a target torque anymore, but we have the maximum torque. 
And then instead of the torque tolerance, we have the minimum torque. So it means that the target torque needs to be reached here in this example between zero and three Newton meters. Going back to torque control angle monitoring, we can then set the minimum angle, which is 300 degrees, maximum angle, 1080 degrees. And then we have free speeds. So free speed is something I will go back to just a bit later when we review the auto customizing part. Second page of the preset will be start with soft start. So soft start is going to make sure that the tool slowly start the fastening so that the catch the screw properly catch the thread and then the tool will be able to reach the set speed for maximum uh, productivity. Sitting point is expressed in percentage of the target torque. So here it's set to 40%, meaning that at 40% of three Newton meters, the tool will slow down, making sure that the torque is reached in proper conditions. Torque rising, ramp up speed are related to the final torque up um, event. Depending on the assembly, we can also play with those parameters. Finally, torque compensation is going to be some kind of calibration, but here it's available for each preset. So basically what you can do is recalibrate the tool for each preset. And that means that you can have a preset for a hard joint, a preset for a soft joint and a preset for a medium joint. And for each of these joints, you will be able to fine tune the tool so that the tool is properly calibrated for this specific assembly. Other settings that we have available here are advanced, screw counting, IO, controller, network, multi-sequence and model. So all of these we will review in our next session. So make sure that you stay here and come back so that we can view also these different parameters. So now going back to the main window, we can again see our preset number one. We can change the preset here by selecting it from the screen. This is something that can also be locked so that the operators do not have access to the presets. Presets can also be selected through the 25 pin IO through different uh, items around the tool. So going back to the preset one, we now see that our target torque is three Newton meters. And here we have information related to the last fastening. So the last fastening lasted for 1,276 milliseconds. We have the different angles as well. A1 is before snug torque, A2 is after the snug torque. Here we have screw counting. So we have five screws to count, four screws remaining. So it's a good guidance for the operators. And I will make a fastening so that we can see the information displayed as a result. So what we see here is our target torque three Newton meters, applied torque, three Newton meters. So we write here time 920 milliseconds, angle before snug torque 666 degrees, after snug torque 13 degrees. And we have now three screws remaining 
out of five. So the screw counting is uh, one of the features that we will review in the next session, which is at 1.30 GMT. So in one hour and a half. So until then, I will gladly take any questions you have related to what we've just seen right now. Tom will help us and read out the question that you can write in the chat. So feel free to write away and ask your questions. Okay, Adrian, so we have two questions. The first one is uh, from Anders and it's uh, admin. I see that we have some questions from Anders. First question is admin and operator login. So can operator change the settings? The answer to that is no. Um, every menu is password protected. So for the operator to be able to change the settings, they would need to have the password, enter the menu and change the settings. Same goes for the presets. We can lock the screen so that the operator cannot change the preset uh, and making sure that this is only doable through the 25 pin IO or through remote control via the um, uh, network. The other question from Anders is related to transfer data. So the data is transferred either for the RS232 or Ethernet port. And we have two uh, protocol of communication, which are Modbus and Open Protocol as well. Third question comes from Juan Antonio. When will the products be available to purchase? The products are being launched today for international. So feel free to come to us with your inquiries. The products are available starting from today. If you have any other question or if you are watching this video uh, on demand, feel free to send me an email. You have my email address here. We will make sure to answer your question. Another question coming from Jaden, which is a question coming from India. It's related to a fair in India. So Jaden, what I offer you is that we discuss this question um, offline. This is a specific question related to, to our collaboration and the Indian market. So we can discuss this question offline. Other question coming from Jadon is how many tightening can be stored? So the fastening data is recorded on the SD card in a CSV file. And the structure of this uh, data is going to be uh, different subcategories of folders. So the first folder is going to be the year. Next folder is going to be the month and then in this month folder, we have a different CSV file for each day of the month. So this CSV file will contain every event that happened on the tool, whether it's a fastening, the switch being put to reverse or fastening position. So everything happening on the tool is going to be saved in the CSV file. You can see that the tool is delivered with the eight gigabyte SD card. We calculated that you can produce for four to five years constantly, day in, day out, before starting to fill in, fill up the SD card. CSV file take almost no space at all. So the, the SD card will be able to store a lot of data. Other question from Enders is how many screwdrivers can be connected to the display? So with the corded tools, we can connect one tool to the controller and for the um, battery tools, which we'll, we, we will review tomorrow, we can connect up 
up to eight tools at the same time on one single controller. Um, other question coming from Jadon related to com how we compared with Atlas Copco, Cleco, and Ingersoll Rand, which are obviously competitors to us. So this is also something that we can discuss uh, offline, Jaden, with pleasure. What I would say is that before we launched those tools, obviously we tested them against a benchmark of the market. Uh, and we are absolutely sure that the customers will be very satisfied whether they, this type of tool is new to them or they have experience already using some of our competitors' tools. Next question coming from Wolfgang is about price. This is also something that uh, we will share with you individually. Uh, here, today in the session, we have different uh, type of customers, whether it's distributors or um, end users. So the price will be made available to you very shortly. Um, and there's, as another question, if you want, and there's, um, what I offer you is that we discuss offline. I think that you have uh, a few more questions probably behind that one. So I would be happy to, to answer those questions, making sure that you have everything you're looking for and we can discuss that offline. And if needed, and it's valid for every one of you, we can always have a separate uh, session together where we can really go through the tools uh, in a private session, making sure that all of your questions are answered and you get a personalized demonstration of the tool meeting your requirements. So next session is going to be at 1.30 GMT. So it is UK time. Keep that in mind if you are in a different time zone. And during this session, we will review the workflow options and the configuration of the tool. So all the settings that will allow us to build around the presets and integrate some process control solutions to the tool as well. So I'm counting on you to be here in one hour and a half. Um, in the meantime, I hope you have a good time and see you in one hour and a half. Thank you very much, everyone.